everybody, welcome. It is your friend in flowers, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and I am super happy to be here with you on this Friday following 4th of July. And um, I just wanna do this right at the top of the show. Friends, I think if you were with us last week, you know that we had got a new set, which is a really big deal. There's a whole wall of built-ins behind me to, to give us options for our live show. But part of that dream was I wanted us to be able to get back to doing this. And that is just having the big harvest viewable for you guys to see it. And we'll see how it works out today. We gotta pick up all those flowers to show you guys. But anyway, it's just, we're pretty pleased as punch around here. And so um, today's show is gonna be a good one. I'm gonna be sharing my late summer plantings, um, what to plant now, and I'm gonna share some veggies and some flowers. I'm gonna be making small and large blocks. Large blocks are key for one of the things that I'm gonna be starting today. And friends, the deal of the day, if you're a flower farmer, you wanna hang around. Um, our, we have a great deal of the day that isn't often on a deal. Um, and then we always have a free a prize drawing or a giveaway every Friday. And you have to be in the app, so if you're watching us on social media, you better hop over, download the app quick, and get back over here to be able to enter for that. Can't wait to give that to you. Um, and at the very end of the show, we're gonna wrap it all up with a live Q&A at the end. And if you have questions um, and a comment, just type at Lisa and then type your question. And then the team will gather those up and they'll pick a couple of those for me to answer at the end of the show and would love to do that. Um, so friends, before we get started, inside the app down at the bottom, there's a share button hit that share button to let your friends know that you're here and to invite them over. Y'all do that so much for us. We have droves of new um, followers every week here inside the app for the show. And we just think that's all because y'all. Y'all inviting them and telling them about it and we appreciate that. Um, remember when you're setting up your account and even to check back in, to check your email addresses and your phone numbers for typos, it happens. We have shipping questions and we can't get in touch with customers, so please double check that for us. Um, and remember here inside the app, all orders that are seed packet only ship for free, y'all. The shipping's on me and we are happy to do that. Um, all the products that are available here in the app, you pay $9.95 once and you can buy as many products as you want here in the app and there's no additional shipping fee. Um, and remember that we ship to all 50 of the United States. So if you are watching us on Facebook or Instagram, we are so glad that you've dropped, dropped in, but I just want you to know we do have a um, phone app. It's totally free. You just have to head over to your phone's app store, search Gardner's Workshop, download it quickly and come right back. It doesn't take but a second because the app gives you so many other features. First off, you can build a favorites list. That is really great. If you see something and you're not sure, you can put it on your favorites list. You can watch replays. You can participate in the comments with other viewers. Plus, you get to enter the giveaway. You cannot enter the giveaway from social media. Um, so, and the, another two things I wanna tell you before we really get into the show here is that we often sell out of products during the live show. If you go to put something in your cart and it says out of stock, sign up to be notified, I recommend that you do that because oftentimes the team may be behind the scenes grabbing stock from our big website and bringing it over here, especially if it's something that's on special, right? So that just means you'll get a little notification on your phone, No, nothing beyond that. Um, and also friends, we absolutely love it. I particularly love it when you guys post the sunflower emoji in the comments. Those are people identifying themselves as Gardener's Workshop students who we consider family, and um, we just love that so very, very much. So friends, out of the gate, I am giving away a $25 store credit this week. That means one lucky live viewer is gonna go to their cart and after they claim their prize, and there will be a $25 credit waiting for them. So hit that buy button. You're not buying anything, y'all. That's just putting you on the list. Hit that button, and that'll put you in the drawing, which I will take at the end of the show. So friends, you know, every season that we go through since my new book, The Cut Flower Handbook, come out, I 
realize just how much information is pertinent to the season we're in. Right now, I am getting inundated with questions about, is it too late to plant XYZ? Or when do I start cool flower XYZ? Friends, the cut flower handbook really holds your hand and walks you through a few simple steps for you to figure all that out. And then you'll know it for life. You don't have to figure it out for every flower. You need to figure it out for your garden and then apply it to every flower you're considering. So the Cut Flower Handbook um, is a powerful reference tool. It features over 66 flowers plus the Cut Flower concept and then the steps that I follow to do that. When you purchase the book from us, I love signing a copy for you. Plus it comes with a PDF download, the flowers that didn't make the book. This is hardback, 225 images, a quarter or a third of which is my sis Suzanne took. We're just proud as punch of it, so I would love to sign a copy for you. And then remember that Vegetables Love Flowers is the book that I wrote a few years ago, which is really about my method of gardening, about not using pesticides. It really goes deep on succession planting and why flowers benefit vegetables. This is not about growing vegetables, y'all. This is about growing a great cutting garden, flower garden in your vegetable patch harvesting it like vegetables to keep the flowers present, to keep all those good guys coming to your garden. Um, so Flat Vegetables Love Flowers comes with a free bonus video book study also. I mean, I talked to the photographer, Suzanne and I do a chat in there. It's really a fun video book study and I would love to sign that for you also. And then y'all, you know that my first book, Cool Flowers, that started it all, right? 10th year anniversary, and this book is selling more today than it ever did before because it is it was the lost family, right? So Cool Flowers, this is the jumping off point. If you don't have this little handbook, you need to get it. I would love to sign a copy for you. And it also comes with a video book study series. And it was in fact written for home gardeners, but is easily accessible to flower farming. Um, and it just explains the concept. And so this is a great jumping off point. So um, friends, I get asked this so many times a day, and I just wanna say it is not too late to plant. It all depends on what you're planting, but there's almost always something that can be planted, right? I mean, depends on where you are. There's always something that you can either be seed starting and planting or something you can do for your garden. We start seeds here in my 8A farm um, almost every month of the, well we do, every month of the year except for December. And we only don't do it in December because we want to take the month off for the holidays, right? Um, so it is all based on knowing your first historic fall frost. That is based on a decade or more of information. That information is available online. Just put in your zip code and say, what's my historical first fall frost? And that'll give you that date. Then you compare the dates to maturity on a seed pack. Seed packs will say 90 days to bloom, 110 days to bloom. You need to just sit down with a calendar and do some counting, then add some time for you to actually harvest. And then, you know, it can get really deep quick. There are some flowers that are day length sensitive, but there are a lot of great flowers that you can continue to plant. Um, and we are starting a lot of seeds right now for our fall harvest. So my late summer planting guide, um, what are we planting now for fall flowers? Um, I'm going to be starting, and I'm going to do this on the show today, I'll be sowing some ornamental kale. We'll be starting more cosmos, more marigolds, sunflowers. We continue to start pro-cut sunflowers until 60 days before my first fall frost. My first fall frost is mid-November, so we're doing it till mid-September, and in fact, I go two weeks beyond that just in case my frost is late right? That's a huge cash crop. And of course, we're starting tons of grasses and amaranth. Um, funny about amaranth is kind of like cosmos. Amaranth kicks into gear in the fall and it grows so much quicker. So most of us still have time to stop that, to start those. Now, there are some cool season hardy annuals that are actually true biennials. Those are, those are um, dianthus that actually have a little bit different growing um, 
life cycle than true hardy annuals. They need to be started earlier than our regular fall planted stuff. And that is two of them, Electron and Super Duplex. But y'all, those are the two most Sweet Williams grown by flower farmers. The colors are phenomenal. I'm in love with Super Duplex. You have to go to, it's in the app. Um, and you'll find, and both of those need to be in the ground by early fall so they can get established so that they can get what's called vernalization. And that's a cold treatment um, going through winter so that they'll bloom next spring. So check both of those out. Now, the veggies that we're starting around here is we start edible kale. We're still starting squash and zucchini. You have plenty of time to, to get a harvest there. Of course, we think the bush beans are the best for the fall. Um, so we'll be starting those in the cup. We'll actually be direct sowing those in the coming weeks. I love to do lettuce, beets, and radishes, all the greens, right? We'll begin, we can plant them in the garden or you can start them out. Now, if you're kind of new to vegetable growing um, and you're not sure when to actually plant, we have this incredible vegetable planter, y'all. See this red line right here? That, you move that red line to your frost date and this tells you, we're looking at the fall side, this tells you the last time you can plant tomatoes, the last time you can plant peppers, when you should plant beets and greens and just all of that stuff. And on the opposite side, it does the very same thing for spring. You put the line to where your frost date is and it tells you when to start seeds, when to plant. It is really an incredible tool. For $5.95, this is the surest thing you can get for yourself. It comes with some instructions. I will tell you that I was guilty of not really reading this when we first got it years ago. Sit down and spend 30 minutes reading all this and you will not believe the information that you can actually glean from that. So now we're gonna do a little camera switcheroonie here and I'm gonna Hello. do some soil blocking oh. for you. So, and almost cut the show off. That Sorry. is always my fear. Um, and that's why I'm not allowed to touch the camera anymore, y'all. And that's the truth. I need it to be up higher so I can actually make the blocks. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to first make small blocks. Um, and I want to show you those first. So, this is some Miss Burns lemon basil. Can they see that? Yep. Um, this is a tray of Miss Burns lemon basil that I just started. It's just coming along. And I'm going to first make these small blocks. There's five sets of 20 here. This is 100 on this green tray, which is actually the deal of the day, y'all, which you'll hear about here shortly. Um, so let's make some of these small blocks. So this is the ready-made blocking mix, and we have that available. Um, it's actually, is the, is the soil available in the app individually? The small bags so this is available um, and it's moistened it's three parts soil to one part water I'm using two hands to hold on to the blocker and I push it down twice can I have a paper towel please um, and I am going to just thank you I just dropped my hand right down into the dirt y'all and once you get your hands dirty and you touch everything else, you see just how much of a mess I can make. All right, so here is the tray, and I'm just gonna place the blocker. Sister, I think I need you over here to see. I can't tell if I'm seeing or not. Um, and I'm just gonna pull the plunger and make the blocks, and I'm gonna do that again. I think it needs to go up. And this is really a quick process, y'all, when you're not doing it on camera and worrying about talking at the same time. So when I'm placing the plunger, the, the, the blocks on the tray, I am doing that in a way that water can freely run between the sets. And I'm just gonna make one more here. I push it a second time to make sure that the um, plunge, that the chambers are full. And so see, I'm leaving a space on this side and I'm leaving just a small space in between the clusters. This makes watering so much easier. So if I was gonna be starting that Sweet William, the, the um, Super Duplex and Electron now, this is the block that I would be using for that. 
So this tray holds a hundred of those small blocks. Now I want to make the two inch block because we are going to sew those today. And so you use the same mix, but I tend to pile up a little bit more. Two hands, it's a little bit different technique because what you'll find is most people have trouble. They don't compress enough soil in the block. So I have filled the chambers up and the soil is pretty moist. Tell you, it's easier to make it, to make blocks when they're, so I'm squeezing, I, I can't because yeah. of the camera. So there's four and so 16 of these blocks. Why don't you hold that over here, move that over there. There we go. Sorry y'all, we are just testing out our new set in so many different new ways. And y'all are a part of this journey with us, right? So I'm making the blocks. And you know, you see just how much extra soil it takes to use these bigger blocks. But there's just some applications where that is definitely the best choice. So it's not that I don't use the large blocker, it's just that I don't use it nearly as much. So I'm squeezing the plunger. And there's four, and I'm just gonna make two more because I want to sew our ornamental cable into these blocks. And this is just borderline a little too wet, but I will tell you, if you have trouble getting the, so the blocks to come out of the blocker tool, it's because your soil is too dry. So I always err on wetter than drier. So look how beautiful those are. One more set. Melissa said she's gonna start soil blocking. <laughs> she's gonna what? She's gonna start soil blocking this fall. Oh. She can look at all these videos. Oh yeah, so you know, all these videos are featured on the products here in the app. So you can always go back and see one of the videos that we have made to up your technique, because I will tell you that when I was learning how to sew a block, we didn't even have the internet, y'all. That's how long ago it was. And all I had was a couple pictures to look at. So here's the last set. And there you go. So this is 16 of the two inch blocks, and I am gonna actually sew those. Am I gonna sew those now? So they're gonna move this out of the way, and I'm gonna sew these seeds. All right, so is that the right position, sister? Um, so, K ornamental kale, good, thank you. Um, so where can, should I sew? And I'm just gonna sew one or two blocks. Yeah, up here in the middle. So I'm gonna do here in the middle. So ornamental kale looks like the ornamental kale you plant in a container, but it gets really tall. And you want it to plant it really, really close together. And one of the tips and tricks that we do is to plant multiple seeds in a block. So instead of just putting one seed in a block, I'm actually gonna put three to four seeds in a block. And I'm gonna plant this entire block without splitting them apart. And because kale needs to be covered, I'm pushing the seed down in there. So I'm gonna say that again because we want to drive this ornamental kale, which this is crane. I don't know what color I'm selling, but all of them are awesome and they're here in the app. Um, you want them to grow tall. It's one flower head per plant, so you don't get branching. And I'm putting three to four seeds in each block. And I'm gonna plant this block at six inch spacing in all directions, and I'm not thinning, nor am I breaking apart. I want them to be tight. That helps them to stretch and grow tall. And that's how I do that. And that's why I use the two inch block for kale, because I put multiple plants in there. You could simply just drop the seeds in the hole and put a little blob of soil on top of it. I just find it easier just to poke them right in. So that is a great way to plant ornamental kale. All right, so we're going back, y'all. And we didn't even cut you off. 
You just don't know how important that is and how easy it is to do. <laughs> All right, friends, so let's talk about the different ways you can become a soil blocker, right? So our number one selling product here in the app, our customer favorite is what that means, is the Soil Block Maker Kit. The kit includes the small blocker, which is the one I use 99% of the time, y'all, 96% of the time probably. It makes 20 of those three quarter inch blocks. The kit includes my Seed Starting Made Easy online course. That's about 120 minutes long, broken them to sessions. It includes direct sowing, soil blocking, starting sunflowers and seed plug trays, and the new Swift commercial blocker. It's all in there and included. Also, you get your choice of either three cool season seeds or three warm season seeds. Totally your choice, you choose that as you actually, um, when you're purchasing, and it comes with five of these large trays which hold three sets of 20. It comes with the wooden plant markers, it comes with the toothpick which is the poop and the holder, that's the way I sow most of my seeds, and the aluminum seed pan. Friends, you don't realize how much static electricity is fighting you if you're using a little plastic dish. So you get all of that, plus you get the, a bag of the ready-made mix. This will make about five to 600 of those little individual blocks, y'all. So this has everything it needs, all the nutrient. You get the bag, the blocker, the um, seed starting made easy course, the seeds, the trays, the seed pan, all for $89.95. Um, and you can purchase all of these things individually inside of the app. Um, but that just gets you totally set up to soil block. You know what I mean? You have all the pieces to actually do the job. Now, part of soil blocking is that we love making our own soil mix. Not only is it economical, um, you just, it's just, you're, you have total control, right, over the ingredients. So we made what's called the soil set. And I'm gonna take it down here for you. So, fungus gnat um, fighting kit is included in this set. These are the bits you put in your watering can. I do it once a week to water with. That kills any developing larva in the moist soil, as well as the yellow sticky traps that we have laying around in our grow room area that attracts the adults that are laying the eggs, so you kill the whole cycle. So that is included. This also includes the aluminum seed pan. It also has the DIY nutrient powder that's what this is y'all it's powder it's nothing but green sand and rock phosphate people have trouble finding this is why we make this mix for you has the recipe right here on the front you add your peat moss or cocoa fiber and compost that have been sifted and this will make six recipes a recipe is about equivalent of one bag of our ready-made mix and friends, it also includes our toothpicks and the dispenser, as well as the best part of the whole set, y'all, the whole point is this is the sifter. This fits beautifully on top of a five gallon bucket. It just makes it so simple and easy to do. Sift all your peat moss or cocoa fiber and your compost. Put it into a container. We do a lot of it over the winter and just have it ready to go all season. You get all of these pieces for $58.95, and everything is available individually in the app. Um, you can find it all, and I will tell you that this sifter has changed it for everybody. Do you know how many sifters there are all out there that do not fit on a five gallon bucket? Most of them, y'all. This one fits perfectly. We absolutely love it. All right, so now for that blocker that I used today for the, um, the, the cane, um, crane seeds, this is the two inch soil blocker. This makes four two inch blocks. It comes with this nipple, you just pop into it, and it, that creates a little dimple to receive your seeds. So this is $46.95, and in fact, you won't use it as often probably, but when you need it, you need it. I start sweet peas in this, watermelon, um, squash, sunflowers, that's what these are all for. And then you can also purchase separately the little inserts, you pop out those nipples and pop these in, and it makes a perfect hole on the top of the two inch block 
to receive something you're potting up. We do do that with peppers and tomatoes, eucalyptus, um, things we just want a really bigger deal, and these are $9.95. Now, I use all of the different tray sizes, um, and because what you'll find is you make the most use out of your heat mat and your grow lights, the real estate, right? That's prime real estate by using the appropriate size tray. These are foam. They are not disposable, y'all. We use these over and over for years. So we have the mini, which is about a five inch square size. It holds one set of 20 small blocks. It's $1.95 for five trays or $6.95 for a 25 pack. This is what we call the small tray. It holds two clusters of 20. So 40 plants fit on this little tray or two sets of the two inch. So you'll get either eight two inch blocks or 40 small blocks. Doesn't that say it all friends, why you should always use a small block when you can? It's just so much better use of space. Oh, this is 295 and 1295 for a 25 pack. This is what we call our large. This is what comes in the kit. This holds three sets of 20. It'll also hold the two, two sets of tw um, two inch blockers. It is 395 for a set of five or $15.95 for 25. Um, and we use the tape just like we do on all of our trays, masking tape um, with our marker. Now friends, ding, 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 it's the deal of the day. And this was my choice when we were setting this up. Friends, guess what's 20% off this week? We don't even usually offer these trays over here in the app because on our big website, they require additional shipping because guess what? It costs more to ship them. So you're not only avoiding the additional shipping, you are getting these trays for 20% off. A five pack is normally 30 bucks, $29.95. They're yours for $23.96 and you can get a 10 pack. And the 10 pack is regularly $57.95, is on sale for $46.36. Friends, these trays will last you forever. You know what I love the most about them? Is you can, this can be fully loaded with mature plants and you can hold it with one hand. It doesn't flex and bend. And so let's look, here is a tray, um, one of these green trays. This is, what is, this is Celosia. This is Chief Mix, one of my succession plantings that's going in. And you can just hold, walk around with two trays. I mean, anybody that you deals with plug trays knows what I'm talking about. It takes two hands right so these are the plastic trays this is in app only and it's while supplies last and they're available um, the sale goes off sunday morning at 8 a.m eastern time right so don't miss that chance y'all that is one of the number one thing one of our number one products and you do not want to miss out on that so sister love amen i got something on my dirt face on nose, go. i got dirt on my face and I have different glasses on and I can't really see very well. <laughs> I'm realizing I can't read. Um, all right, so our garden marker, I was just talking about, we mark all of our trays with mask, using masking tape and writing on them with this weatherproof marker. And this holds up. We have had it hold up for a year to year on wooden markers. And here's a great example. Um, this is a wooden stick that was out in our garden. This is from my sweet pea planting from last fall a year ago <laughs> and look at it you can still read its royal mix this garden marker really works it's 6.95 um couldn't wouldn't be caught without them so as we're moving into cool season stuff right um, and in the middle of summer um, people often ask do i really need to use a heat mat friends commercial growers even use heat in greenhouses. They use heat tables or big heat mats. So yes, the answer is to that. This heat mat will hold three to four of those large trays. Um, that's the one that holds clusters of three sets of 20. Um, it has a built-in thermostat. That's what this little lump is here. And it keeps this mat 15 to 20 degrees warmer than the air temperature. This is also how I grow amazing sunflowers, y'all. We put all of our sunflower seeds on the heat mat when they're planted and it gets them to pop quick and grow amazing root systems. This is $39.95. There is a much larger version of this available over on our big website, thegardenersworkshop.com if you need that. Um, we use our heat mats, I mean, year round. I mean, it's like December again, that's the only time they ever get unplugged. 
So friends, I have good news. Totally am in love with this little espresso. I think we have one of these. It's hidden now. We use one of these as our um, a little vase. It's up there, isn't it? I thought it was. Oh, yep. Oh, they stole it. This is it. I'm looking for what's up there, and it's in my hand, y'all. Not only is this great if you have house plants, this is a little watering can you can leave sitting around. It's called the Espresso Watering Can. It's stainless steel. It holds two cups, which is one pint of water. Um, and this is just a super sweet. It, we thought it was just going to be a one-time product. Y'all have loved it so much. We're considering bringing it back on and keeping it. We love this little espresso can, but look at this, y'all. This is the watering can that I use in my grow room. It's back in stock. It's not been available for months. This can is also stainless steel. It holds four cups of water, twice as much, and I totally am loving this long um, neck that makes water and soil blocks, but I'll tell you what else it does great for. Bobo loves this for watering vases. You know, if you have flower arrangements you've done. And so, I yep, want y'all to notice how dry this tray is, if y'all can see that. And we're gonna actually water it. So, let's, it's this side that we wanna see, sister. There you go, you are gonna hold it? Mm -hmm. So, I am just gonna pour the water in. They can't really see what I'm doing. Wait a minute. I am just pouring the water in not up against the blocks, but up against the end of the tray. And because it's not sitting flat, y'all, I'm just kind of floating it around. I always put a little bit more than I think it needs. And when you use a gentle pour, so you can see there's standing water in there, we're gonna look in there in a few minutes and then we're gonna dump off any excess. When you use a gentle pour, it does not wash your blocks away, as well as you point the pour away from your blocks. This is $24.95 and get them while you can. We hope that the supplies will last. And it's already drank all that water. And it's already drank all that water. That was a really dry tray. Because normally I water first thing in the morning. I save that one for y'all. All right. This is what I feed my seedlings. Every Monday, they get this. So what that means is my watering can, I just add this into the watering can so when they get their water, they get a little nibble of some food, right? Some nutrition. This is the Neptune Seaweed Fish. It is 16 and 18 ounces um, and it's $15.95. You put a tablespoon per gallon is what I do. It's the house plant version um, and it just grows amazing seedlings. And as we're heading into um, getting ready to hit cool season hardy annual time, y'all, it's time to start thinking about getting ready to prepare your beds. And this is the same fertilizer that I use here on my farm. Um, it comes in a four pound bag. It's $14.95. It's three pounds per hundred square feet. Um, and this is an organic or OMRI certified chicken litter based um, fertilizer and if you want to learn more about it just look at it on the app or go to the website it is available in bigger bags over on the website um, and this is $14.95 friends the deal about organic is that it feeds the soil that takes care of your plants you're not feeding the plants directly and that is super important so speaking about cool flowers um, so the biodegradable film um, while I use it year-round I feel like it's fall planting and very early spring planting that benefits really a lot from film. And why is that? It's because there's so many cool season, hardy annual weeds, y'all. Think chickweed, henbit, all of those cool season weeds. And because your cool flowers, when you plant them in the fall, don't do a lot of top vegetative growth, right? They're just kind of sitting down, laying down some roots before they get to spring, guess what does grow? All of those weeds. So, this is the biodegradable film, which you can see I've used this to demonstrate many times. It has a dark side and a light side. When I'm making beds in the middle of summer, we put the light side up so that the surface is cooler. But when I make my fall planted and my very early spring planted beds, I put the black side up because during winter, it's beneficial for the surface to be black to warm it up just a smidgen. Biodegradable film is different than landscape cloth and other plastics. It is really easy to pop through. Bobo uses the Bobo weeder, which is called the, 
what do we call it? The hand weeder, I think is what it's called. It's just a pokey, y'all. It's here in the app, I think it's like eight bucks. Totally love this. Now it's available several ways. You can get, it's all 48 inches wide. That's made for a 36 inch or 30 inch bed. It's a 50 foot piece for $24.95 or a six pack of 50 foot pieces for $119.95 or you can get it in a 100 foot piece for $39.95 for one piece, or you can get a three pack for $110.95. Friends, this is one of the biggest, not only labor savers, but you don't lose your mind. You know what I mean? You're not all, the weeds aren't always ahead of you. I truly attribute our ability to scale our farm um, to buy it to this film because we were able to just maintain so much more in a very reasonable fashion. So biodegradable film can change your life and you can mulch on top of it. All right. Now we have flower support netting. This is, um, first we use this as a planting grid, meaning we lay it down on the bed and it has six inch spacing. It's perfect for that, but it's for our flowers to grow up through. And you can watch the video that's actually on the product. This is 36 inches wide. It's available in a 20 foot piece and a 50 foot piece. It's $11.95 or $21.95. And we have much larger pieces available over on our website, even up to a roll that's 3,280 feet. Um, if you don't net your flowers, you will have nothing to cut. They'll either be crooked or in the dirt. So friends, guess what's back? It is our super cushy jumbo size kneeler um, seat pad. So this is 15 by 20, it's two inches thick, and I can attest, this is mine, by the way. Um, it's two inches thick. We use it in the garden. My husband uses it in the garage on the ground when he's working on his motorcycles. It is lightweight, made in the USA. It is $42.95, and I mean, it's the only way I get down on the ground anymore, y'all. Um, you can actually work in your house. Some people groom their dogs on these. They're absolutely amazing. So remind everybody, if you want to be entered to the $25 giveaway that'll happen at the end of the show, um, enter now, hit the buy button. You're not buying anything. It's just entering you. And in case you joined late, um, I'll be doing a little Q&A at the end. And if you'd like to submit your question to possibly be one of them, hit in the comments, just put at Lisa and type your question and the team will pick those out. And just a reminder that to store your seeds properly, y'all, you buy seeds when you meet the flower and then you store them properly. And desiccants are a big part of that to keep them dry. You can get a two pack for $2.95 or a 10 pack for, for $9.95. Now I'm showing you the end of the road Ami Magus because I wanted to say I love cutting Ami when it's like this. This is aging out. It's getting firmer and firmer. Don't forget about Ami like that. This is gonna be hung to dry. So Ami Magus doesn't like it hot, but it'll be a great addition as you start maybe drying some flowers. Look y'all, who doesn't love blue flowers? This is Blue Horizon Azuratum. Real, this is a great summer flower. We succession plant this and really appreciate it. Suzanne often puts three of them together in a bouquet instead of spreading them out and it gives you just more bang for your buck. And friends, all of these straw flowers I'm getting ready to show you are the regrowth from the first crop I showed you weeks and weeks ago. This is the purple red, and I think this is a fantastic color. Think about having this for fall. This is really beautiful. And you know, straw flowers um, dry exactly like you see them. This is the creamy white, and we love white flowers. And all of these are gonna be hung to dry. And this is my favorite color, orange. If you didn't know that already, you look like y'all like my orange shirt. I'm just so into orange. Think about having this for fall. So we have another crop of straw flowers that we're succession planting that are just getting ready to start. And they'll be performing right up till fall. Totally love that. And then look at this. I mean, think fall, y'all. Think of all these flowers that how would they be helpful in the fall? This is golden yellow, we love that. And look at this copper red. This is another great fall color. You know, we I have really learned about planting my colors to the season. This is peach. 
Is it actually called peach? It is called peach. Peach mix. Look at this nice array. And y'all, straw flowers just really um, hold their color. So they're gonna look just like that. There's just such a nice mix. Now, for those folks that love making basil, this is basil Gen genovesser. I'm, I'm never gonna get that right. This is the culinary. They're all culinary that I'm getting ready to show you, but this is the most commonly one used for making pesto. We don't typically use this in bouquets, but it is super fragrant, and this would be great just on your kitchen table, right? And so this is, we make this mix in-house. This is what we call the lemon cinnamon bouquet mix. This has both this lemon and the cinnamon. So you don't have to buy separate packs if you don't want to, but it has both of these guys, which you're gonna see separately here. That is really pretty. And then this is purple ruffles. And we get this variegated um, in the purple ruffles. You can see there's little specks. It gets, sometimes it's very variegated, but this is a great variegated. Um, this is a great, fall color, right? May not be the hottest color for the middle of summer, but you need to plant it now to have it for fall. That is purple ruffles. And then this is another great one that we always plant to have in fall. This is the cinnamon. And this has a maroon stem. Look at those little flowers. And it smells really, really nice. And then customer all-time favorite is Miss Burns Lemon, y'all. Hands down, people love this. And I love, look at this. So this is the lemon, that's the cinnamon. Look how much darker the cinnamon is. This is what we prefer to use all summer long is the lemon. And then we move to cinnamon. So if I have any of my club members on here, y'all, this is the sunflowers that we sowed weeks and weeks ago. This is the Pro Cut Lemon. I do the sow-in circle every week for my membership where we sow seeds together. And this is some of them that we do. Pro Cut Lemons, the Pro Cuts are from seed to harvest in 30, 60 days. So we sow these right up weekly until mid-September. So friends, you have time for all of those. And this is what I'd be looking at for fall. This is the bouquet mix. This has four of the Pro Cut oranges in it. Um, and this is just the classic. We grow these all summer and we grow them right up until fall. Um, and we'll do plant these weekly up until mid-September. And my first frost date is mid-November. Just remember, you gotta sit down and get that book and count back on your calendar. And look at this, this is gold light. Y'all, look at this. That goes with everything. Really love it. This is a Pro Cut Gold Light. This is a Pro Cut that is great to grow all times of the year. Spring, fall, summer. And then these are some more cool flowers. This is Goldilocks. This is a double, um, it's a, this is a very early spring planting that just started. So we love having these guys in the middle of summer. They just hold up so well. People think they're sunflowers, but they're not because they're ruffled. Um, anyway, that's Goldilocks and it's one of my favorites. And this is what's pushed it out from being my very favorite. Look at Maya. Y'all look at this. Look at these blooms. So this is a Rudbeckia, it's called Maya, Cool Season Hardy Annual. This is a very early spring planting. We're done with the fall planting, and this is how we succession plant cool flowers. Really love that one. This one is Prairie Sun, and I love this because it's got the green eye, which means it's super useful, right? This again is very early spring planting, so it's later. We love having this, especially if you're doing supermarket bouquets, this is a great addition. And y'all, this is new for us. Last year, the year before, this is Chim Chimney. Look at those fluted petals. Gosh, I love these. Really, really love them. So this is Chim Chimney. And again, that's a very early spring planting um, that the fall planting is already done. Now we have some grasses. Um, and this is called Highlander, and um, it's really tall, and it's got bigger heads. There's a Lowlander, and it's just a smaller version of this. Think about this in the fall, y'all. You have plenty of time to actually plant that. So this is, I've got all three of these here because I wanted to show you. This is Purple Majesty. Purple Majesty is so useful. It looks like a corn stalk, um, but it's burgundy. And 
This, which you're looking at in front of my face, is way too late to harvest. This is the way that we harvest it. See how it's just coming out? Because that is gonna quickly become this, and then it's gonna very quickly become that, and then it's gonna shed pollen all over your customer's table. So just as it is emerging, Purple Majesty, we absolutely love it for the fall harvest. People love that stuff. And then look at this. Could you ever have enough of this? This is Limelight Millet. And I harvest that from early on up until this, and especially if you're drying. I mean, if you have a bucket of this at the market, you are gonna be drawing people to your booth. And then look, this is going up for drying. This is ping pong um, pin cushion. This is a cool flower. This is the last of it. This is very early spring. And it's not the flower, it's these balls that we are really interested in in drying. So this is Selway Terracotta. Y'all, I really love the Selway series. I love their habit. Uh, this is Terracotta, which is just a smidgen darker than the Selway Salmon. This is just a little bit lighter. They both have amazing habits. They're great branchers. You can pinch them. Really love it. And they're just really useful. Think fall for these too, y'all. They're just amazing. And so our Texas plumes are starting to come in. You know, we have this grown for us. Look at this shrimp and these great funky looking yellow. I mean, there's just a lot of variation and I love that, especially when we're making bouquets. So Texas plumes. And then my go-to for summer is Silphid. This is a yellow green, they could kind of describe it as. It just matches everything, right? Um, so you can use this in any bouquet. The foliage is super um, hardy, you know, it holds up. And then look at this. This is flamingo feather. This is that blush color. Really love this. I love the tips, actually. Really love that. And I know you've heard me say before that high Z, I've done that one. Um, high Z is one of my favorites. It's all because the stem is so beautifully maroon. It's got interesting foliage with veining. It's a great color. And I just want to show you this is how I want to cut it. Not, wait a minute, y'all. This is going to help you so much, I think. Not, I don't know if you can tell. This one's longer and there's more space between the little flowers. It's elongating and that's getting old. You wanna cut them when they're short and tight to the top. That's just like this. See how this one is just really shorter? Anyway, that's just a great tip for when should you cut Celosia. And friends, here's the good old spring green. My favorite go-to. Customers love this because it goes with everything, right? Spring green, and that's a one stem per plant. And look at this. This is act mix. Look at all these, Bobo loves this. Flower arrangers love this because of the muted colors, right? This is called, this is the fan type of coxcomb. And it is um, really packed with some um, great colors. Now, if you are interested in drying or fall, this is Kramer's Mix. It has rose, burgundy, and green. This is the variety that is the most acceptable for drying. It holds its color. Um, we really love it. It's a strong brancher. You should pinch it and net it. Uh, but think of this with queen zinnias in the fall. Really beautiful. Now, look at this. Y'all, coxcomb was always in our top 10. Look at these colors. Who doesn't want these in bouquets, right? Super long lasting. And I'm gonna name all these colors and show you as they, we go through them. They're available as a mix or in individual separate colors. So this is the rose, it's Kurumi rose, and it looks like cotton candy, y'all. It is really, really beautiful. Then this is Higyoku. And this one has dark foliage and a scarlet red top. We sold tons of this to Colonial Williamsburg for years, y'all. They always decorated the inn with this, um, and that was a really great one. So this is Kurumi Orange Red. This is the most productive coxcomb I've ever grown. 
This was what saved us in supermarket bouquets for years. It's just very productive, good quality stems. Really love it. And all of these are branchers, right? Y'all look at this. It matches me. This is persimmon. And persimmon is a chief and we love this color. This is the deepest, darkest of all the oranges in the orange family. Then this is the Jura Salmon. We have this seed um, grown for us. You can see it's just a much more muted color. And this seed is limited. We do not have endless amounts of this seed anymore. We didn't have it grown this year and um, y'all have proven to love it as much as we do. And then look at this, this is gold. I mean, you can't have enough of this in the fall. I have proven that before. You just cannot have enough. Really beautiful. And then look at this one. This is the Queen Improved Orange. Oh, and I'm losing one. Look how beautiful this is. All of these would be awesome for fall. And I'm saying that because people get so buried and hot and tired this time of the year, they forget. Now let's look at some Gumfrina. So this was all cut to be dried, so it wasn't stripped, so it's a little weepy, but it'll be hanging upside down soon. This is the Audra Pink, and we absolutely love this. Then we have the bicolor. Look at this. This is how it would look if it was properly stripped. I love this color, y'all. This is so very, very cool, and your sister cut all this. And we also have the Gumpfrina mix. This is a mix of the pale orange, the strawberry fields, and the quiz pink. This is really cool. And this has all been prepared. It's getting ready to be hung to be dried. And this is just the red. Who couldn't sell this at 4th of July, right? Totally love it. And then this is Audra White. And again, this is going to be dried, so it's looking a little droopy. This is the cleanest white flower I've ever grown. It's got a green center. It's really pretty beautiful, fresh, and for dried. We have so much Gumfrina around here, y'all. It's scary. And then here's Carmine. This is the pink. You know, you can do so many things with this. This is the Audra purple red. It's just purple, y'all. And so it hasn't been in water. It's just so droopy, but we're about to fix all that. All right, friends, we're coming in for a landing on zinnias. So this is the Benares Giant. This is the Scarlets. This is just a great color. And if you are a flower farmer, you know, we found a lot of value in growing the colors separately, but the mix is also available. This is deep red. This is a very different red than the Scarlet Red, and that's my favorite stage to cut them in right there before they get those florets. Then this is the purple. It's a little bit darker. This is a great, this is one of my sister's favorite colors. We really love that. And then this is the lilac. one that painted our bedroom that color. Yeah, I did have a bedroom that color. She reminds me every time. This is lilac. It's a little bit lighter than the purple. And you know, when you've got this stuff growing side by side out in the field, it is so easy to see the difference in the color. And look at this yellow, y'all. Yellow is like white flowers. You cut them earlier than later because they'll get really dirty fast. And there's more. Notice how we have so much more orange. Everybody knows orange is my favorite color. Totally in love with that look, right? And whether you love zinnias or not, if you're selling, I can tell you they're your customer's favorites. People love zinnias. This is the giant salmon. Look at the variation in color. Really beautiful, soft. We never quite had enough of these when we were selling to florists. And here is an excellent color. This is coral, y'all. Look at the variation in the color. It's really beautiful. Really beautiful. Gosh, the more I look at zinnias, it just reminds me of why we... It's the number one seed we sell and the number one in the top ten. This is bright pink. I love this one in spring. Look at that. Totally love that. I think of that as the little girl baby shower flower. This is wine. This is definitely a fall color. And then this, my friends, is carmine. Carmine is like watermelon color is the way, or bubble gum color is the way I like to describe it. And again, when you're growing all these different shades, when they're side by side, you definitely see it. Now here's the mix. So you can buy them separately, or if you're just meeting Benary's Giants, Friends, buy the mix and meet them all because they are spectacular.
spectacular. Look at that orange. They're just unbelievable. All right, so this is Zowie. Do you think this isn't a great color for fall? I probably wouldn't have this in the middle of summer, you know, if I wasn't showing it to y'all. This would be one I'd be starting now to have for fall. That is just a really great color. So I need lime, white. So I want to just show you that it's not up. This is white. It is available in the app. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. Again, you always harvest light colors like lime green earlier than later. This is just a great, you can use this as a filler, right? Because it's not a color. We love Benary's Lime Green. And this is my favorite zinnia, y'all. These are Oklahoma's and they're smaller. This is what's on my table most of the summer. Um, really love these guys because of their size, their doubles. So very, very beautiful. And then we have, this is the ca giant cactus mix. And this really has some really beautiful colors. I mean, some of these colors you just don't see in other zinnias. People either love or hate cactus. They, some people think they look like old flowers. Other people love their frilliness. Personal preference. So that is the mix. All right, so now let's look at the queens. And y'all look at this. Queens are smaller than Benaries, but look at that. Totally love. This is the Lime Blotch. This is an excellent series of zinnias to grow for fall. And then look at this, Lemon Peach. And they definitely have a peachy glow to them. Really love them. And if nothing else screams fall, this sure does. This is very antiqued. Um, and that is just such an end color. And you put this with lime green, some of those coxcombs, be spectacular and then this is the lime orange really really love that and then this you can get the series in a mix all of the lime um, I'm sorry the Queens and really love me look at that peachy one really love that all right friends so that's our flower lineup now um, remember to stick around for the Q&A at the end um, folks, remember that over on our big website, we have so many resources for you guys. Um, we have videos, blogs, our podcasts. We actually have two podcasts. We have Field and Garden, and then we also have Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. And the um, Seed Talk that just dropped is our open farm highlights where Lane interviewed Dave, myself, and Ellen after our exhausting day for our open farm this past week. Oh my gosh, y'all, I spoke for eight hours straight in 90 degree weather. It was so much fun, but I am still tired. So Lane captured that all in the podcast. Um, so remember friends, I am hosting Ask a Flower Farmer this coming week. It's on Wednesdays, 1230 Eastern time over on our Instagram account, Gardener's Workshop Farm. And remember to meet us back here next Friday because we'll be highlighting captivating cosmos. Um, and we will have some beauties next week. All right, friends. So it's time to reveal the winner of the $25 store credit. And um, so there's not a name yet. Oh, there it is at the top. <laughs> I was thinking, well, you didn't tell me the name yet. They're telling me everything to say. Um, so friends, I'm still a little overheated, right? So our winner of the $25 credit, and I so hope you're here because we just love giving it away, is Ellen Emerson. Ellen, if you're here, you have won the $25 store credit. Give us a big old shout out right in the comments and the girls will be dropping that into your cart immediately and we will look for your comment. Now, stick around um, and I am gonna do the actual Q&A. So thanks so much everybody for joining us. Um, and so boy, we have a list of questions. So. Let's see, zone 7B, new to flower farming. How to begin preparing soil for brand new beds. The land has been a working farm for almost 100 years. Follow up, I wanna start out in the best way. Oh, Ellen's here, congratulations, Ellen. So somebody, some one of these people 
is going to be putting that right into your cart. And what a gift. We thank you so much for participating and being here. All right, so back to the new flower farmer. Would love your thoughts on where to begin, any courses to take, etc. All right, so first off, um, your method of farming really, um, can, there's a lot of different ways to start. And it really depends on what resources you have available to you. And um, like, do you have a tractor? Do you have a tiller? Do you have a walk behind tiller? Do you have access to a lot of compost or not? Are you gonna be a no-till farmer? There's just so many different ways to approach that. Um, and um, so we would love for you to take a look at Flower Farming School online. My course is the basics. Um, and that's really the, the ground floor place to actually start. It's really about A, figuring out, because what happens so often to us, which happened to me, flowers are only like 25% of a flower farming business, it's the rest of it. And it really just helps you figure out the business part, at least to get them in your hopper and think about before you spend a lot of time actually um, spinning your wheels perhaps. So that course talks about getting the business started, how to build and prepare beds, what to grow, who to sell to, how to start from seed, and harvesting and conditioning. So it's a real ground floor course and that's Flower Farm and School Online, the basics, and that's where I would recommend that you actually start. Can you use soil blocking but start the seeds outdoors? So if you're talking about um, just having your trays sitting outside. You can after they've sprouted, but really for seeds to sprout their quickest and most effectively, um, they need to be on a seedling heat mat and I wouldn't recommend doing that outdoors at all. The whole point of starting seeds indoors is it happens much quicker and more efficiently and it's less work and you have more control. Lots of stuff happens to our seedlings outdoors. I don't know about you from squirrels and birds and rabbits and all kinds of stuff. So we don't really recommend that. Um, how do you recommend managing pests like thrips and Japanese beetles? So I'll start with Japanese beetles first. Um, Japanese beetles are one of two insects or three insects that we actually hand pick, um, meaning it's definitely worth the time. And so when Japanese beetle season comes, um, that's one of the very first jobs that I do when I go out first thing in the morning because the Japanese beetles are typically still sleeping in. Um, and you can go to the crops, whether it's zinnias or marigolds. We take a, a jar or a little bucket of soapy water, just place it under the flower, tap it, and they fall in. You don't have to squish them, you don't have to touch them. Um, and you can really capture a bunch of them, and then we just flush them. And in fact, the soapy water kills them. Um, and so then you can flush them, per my plumber husband said we could. Um, and that just, every one or two that you eliminate potentially prevent 60 the next year. That's how many eggs a female can lay. So we have really seen that that helps us a lot. I also do that for stink bugs and leaf-footed bugs. Both of those are both in the stink bug family. Um, you can just really greatly reduce the uh, population for the next season by doing that. Um, Thrips is all about ramping up the, um, my book, Vegetables Love Flowers, kind of talks about getting the natural order of your garden back up and not growing specific crops that are thrip magnets where you are. That's what I would recommend you start there. How often do you run your drip irrigation during late spring or summer? So we do install tea tape, that's a type of irrigation, um, which most commercial growers use. In all of our beds, our tractor lays it when it makes beds, but we typically um, don't really use it very much just because we get so much rain here. So I would say, you're looking for an equivalent of about an inch a week. And literally, we use the finger test. The finger test is to stick your finger about six inches down in the soil, pull it back. If it's dry, you need to water. You don't want your plants to completely dry out. You don't want your soil wet all the time, but you want the soil to be nice and healthy, right? So you'll have to figure that out. And mulching really retains moisture so much more and the more you build your soil up. Um, so this is my last question, yes. Cool flowers, how do you know to direct sow or to make blocks and use Bio360? What a great question. In Cool Flowers, in the Cool Flower Hand, I mean, in the Cut Flower Handbook and in Vegetables Love Flowers, on every flower I talk about, I tell you the way that I start them or the preferred method. And it should be on your seed packet. 
It is if it came from us, but that's where you should actually begin is by looking in the book, um, and I talk about that extensively. All right, so friends, thank you so much for joining me here today. I will see you Wednesday on Ask a Flower Farmer at 1230 Eastern Time inside Instagram, and thanks so much for joining us today, and that's a wrap. Ciao.